Hey everybody, today's quick tip is gonna be facing. There's three types of patterns Bobcat offers for facing. Uh, you have a uh, bi-directional routine, which we call zigzag. Uh, you also have a single direction routine, cut in one direction and come back. And then there's also an adaptive routine, which is gonna start from the outside and work its way in. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm just gonna create a, a new file, just a sample file. Uh, really, your geometry, you could have uh, irregular geometry, you could have any size geometry, and the idea of the facing is just to uh, remove material and, and have a nice, uh, usually a finish on the top of your parts, okay? So we have just a, a rectangle here. We'll go ahead and get our job started. So we'll create a new job. We're gonna run the stock wizard. We'll set our zero and choose okay, all right? So we have our stock set up. We have our zero set up. Uh, in order to get into the facing routine, this is a mill two axis feature. So we'll right click on our machine setup. We'll come down to mill two axis. Uh, from here, it's gonna start the mill two axis wizard. Our first step is to select our geometry. So we'll go ahead and click select geometry. We'll hold shift on our keyboard, left click on uh, our, our profile here. It will chain all the way around. So that's the geometry we wanna face. We'll go ahead and set our depth and choose OK. Now from here, we're gonna jump to the machining strategy. And the one that we wanna look at here today is facing. So we'll turn this one on and then we'll choose next. Uh, we'll jump ahead to our tool. We're gonna use uh, an inch and a half face mill. You can use any size that you want. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna use an inch and a half face mill and then we'll look at our patterns, okay? So the default pattern is zigzag. Uh, let's just go ahead and compute and we can see we get our tool path. We're gonna right click on our operation and choose back plot. Uh, this would be the bi-directional cutting, also known as zigzag, so you can see it works back and forth across our part. Uh, if we go to a top view here, you can see the first path is, is happening right on the edge of our part here. You may want to uh, shift this position so you don't have 50% of the tool on the part and 50% of the tool off the part. So to make that adjustment, we'll just come back in and edit the feature. We're gonna go to patterns and really for facing your patterns, this is gonna be a lot of your facing uh, settings. Uh, we're gonna look at this first cut offset. This is the bump amount, uh, ensuring that not 50% of your cutter is on and off the material. So you can see how we were able to move that over and adjust it. Now you can see we do have some direct link moves here. If you wanna adjust your link moves, you can go to uh, links here and you can make it an arc move to smooth things out for you, okay? All right, so that's your bi-directional cutting. A couple other settings that I wanna look at here. If we edit our pattern, okay, you'll notice that we have off the workpiece or on the workpiece. When you say off the workpiece, there's a distance amount and that will tell it how far off the workpiece the tool is gonna go. If you say on the workpiece, it's a percentage of the tool, so you could say 50% of the tool stays on the workpiece. We'll go ahead and compute, and you'll see how this adjusts our pattern. Uh, you might have it extend past for the roughing and stay on for the finishing, uh, but really uh, those options are up to you. Now, the one thing that I will say is if you do keep the tool on the workpiece, you will want to adjust your lead value to ensure the tool starts off the material. So you can go to leads, you can say parallel, enter a distance greater than the radius of the cutter. And then now you can see your lead in and lead out starting off the material and working its way back and forth and then on up. Now let's go back and edit our feature here. Okay, let's turn our leads back to vertical. Let's go to patterns. This time we're gonna do single direction off the workpiece and we'll recompute. And again, just by changing it from zigzag to zig, now you're getting single direction cutting starting on one side and going over to the other side. Now, if you wanna change the, the angle that you wanna face your geometry with, you can do that easily. Just go back to your patterns again, and then just adjust. You can have it uh, cut in X, you can have it cut in Y, or you can even define your own angle. I've seen some jobs where users like to put this on, you know, maybe a 45. All right, and we can recompute there. And you can see, now that could be either single direction or bi-directional, it's really easy. You just come in here and you adjust your settings. And as you go, you can see the toolpath will be updated. Now, the last one that I wanna cover here is the adaptive. 
okay so let's go back to our settings here and just set this up with some default settings and again uh, let's choose the adaptive pattern we'll go ahead and recompute and then this will give you that uh, spiral spiraling in type cut to come in and face off your parts now again you have bi-directional single direction and adaptive comment in the video below which type of facing routine you use most often and why